This is the Canon C700 full frame, the first version of which was announced all the way back in 2015 and was available with either a Super 35 rolling or global shutter sensor. The full frame version we have with us today was announced in 2018 and shares the exact same physical design. Since its announcement back then, the C700 family really hasn't been picked up by many productions unfortunately. Trying to find things that have been shot with it online is really difficult, but if you know of any, let us know in the comments. The C700 full frame features a 5.9K 17x9 full frame sensor that Canon has rated to have 15 stops of dynamic range. The camera can shoot a range of different gamuts and gammas, with the C-Log2 gamma being the one to use to get the most dynamic range. The sensor oversamples the 5.9K resolution of the sensor when recording in 4K and 2K internally, which should help with the image quality. However, you can also record 5.9K RAW externally using the optional codex recorder. You can switch between three different sensor modes in the camera, full frame, Super 35 crop, and Super 16 crop. In the Super 35 mode, you can still record 4K, and in Super 16, you can shoot up to 2K. This means that you can use a good range of lenses with the camera, as you can just crop in as you like. The rolling shutter performance isn't fantastic, but also isn't awful for such a high resolution sensor. In the camera's Super 35 mode, it definitely performs better, though you can definitely see some jello. When it comes to latitude, the C700 does perform well, but not quite as well as I have seen from other full frame cameras. Looking at overexposure, it looks good to about four stops over, and from there we can see the chart starting to look worse. Looking at underexposure, we can start to see the image shifting more green as we go through the range. Though I do think performance is actually pretty good here. You can see color held onto well all the way down to five stops under. However, I think you can see a little bit of fixed pattern noise at around minus six. With a bit of noise reduction, you can get pretty good performance here though. In C-Log2, the camera has a base ISO of 800 and can be dialed all the way up to 25,600. At 200 ISO, the image looks really clean. And as you step up, you can see clear noise coming through. With a bit of noise reduction in post, you can easily get nice images from around 6400 ISO. The image the camera can produce is what you would expect from a Canon camera. You get that excellent color science when shooting with the compressed codex, or the ability to manipulate it however you see fit when you shoot raw. Taking a look at the example imagery Canon produced with it, it can look pretty good, but compared to other high-end cinema cameras at the time, let alone now, I don't think it quite stacks up, especially when it comes to highlight roll-off. However, you can obviously still get great looking imagery with it in the right hands. The C700 has the option to record XFABC or ProRes internally in a range of different formats, depending on what you need directly to CFast 2.0 cards using the dual card slot here. The fact you can shoot ProRes internally is actually really awesome. I wish other Canon cinema cameras had this option as well. The quality of the ProRes is excellent and you get far better post-production performance with it than XFABC, though at the trade-off of larger file sizes. In ProRes, you can choose from 422, 42HQ, 4444, and 4444XQ. And in XFABC, you can choose between 42 Longop or Intra and RGB 444 Intra, all depending on what frame rate and resolution you choose and whether you're using the Codex external recorder. You also have a slow and fast mode, which will change what kind of frame rates you can record at. And this all depends on what sensor mode you're in and what resolution you're in, which you can see here. The camera can also shoot raw, but for this, you will need to add this codex unit to the back of it, which makes the camera even longer somehow. Honestly, I don't know why this camera looks so long and unusual. I think it's because it's not very tall and I'm kind of used to how the C300 looks. This codex unit will allow you to record uncompressed 5.9K 12-bit RAW up to 30p and 10-bit RAW up to 60p. It also allows you to capture 168 frames per second in 2K. This recorder is still pretty expensive compared to what the camera goes for now though. Since this, Canon has implemented internal RAW recording into more and more of their cameras. So this is definitely a more dated way of doing it, though it is uncompressed, which you could see as a good or a bad thing. If we do end up seeing a new C700, I'm sure the raw recording on that would be internal to more modern, fast media. The body design of the C700 is consistent across all three versions. The camera is incredibly long, but not very tall, kind of like a square C300 that's been stretched out. It's about as long as a full-size Alexa, but weighs nowhere near that. It's actually surprising just how light it is given its size. This is definitely at the compromise of how the camera feels though. It really is quite large, and I think this was a big factor as to why so many people turned their noses up at it. Compared to other cinema cameras, like the Venice or Alexa, the camera feels a bit hollow. While it's made from magnesium alloy, it just doesn't feel as robust as some of the other top tier cinema cameras. 
but the weight savings will be massive for some owner operators. The top of the camera is covered in mounting points, which you can mount the included top handle onto in a few different positions. The handle is not bad, and you can position it pretty well with the different thread positions. The operator side of the camera has clearly been inspired by previous cinema cameras, and it's pretty easy to use, especially in darker scenarios as the buttons are backlit. The menu system is snappy and it's laid out as you'd expect from a Canon cinema camera, though I did find it quite difficult to find a few settings in the deeper menu system, such as enabling the ND extended mode. There is also an optional panel for the assistant side, which is laid out similarly to the operator side. This would have been an obvious addition for when the camera was being used on a traditional set where your AC would need to control the camera as well. The camera had a range of accessories available at release, though some are now harder to find than others. This includes the EVF-V70, which is the same viewfinder that you can still find being used on the C300 Mark III and 500 Mark II. This means it's still current and the price reflects that. It's a good viewfinder but buying it new is almost the same price as this used C700. The camera also has a 10-stop ND system built in, which you can control on the side of the body. These are physical filters that are quite slow to go between, but having such a great range is really good, though you are limited to just two stop increments. They perform pretty well, though the extended 8 and 10-stop ND options do stack NDs, so this will change your back focus, which will most likely result in your lenses marks being out. The camera has pretty much everything you need when it comes to inputs and outputs. This includes multiple SDI outputs, timecode, genlock, dual XLR ports, and a range of power outputs. Having this many SDI outputs makes sense given the types of sets Canon were trying to get this camera onto. The C700 was available with either a PL mount or EF mount, and an optional B4 mount was also available. The EF mount allowed for the use of EF lenses that have autofocus, which was quite a unique feature for a cinema camera in this price point at the time. And it kind of still is, with only really the Red V Raptor, at its price, having autofocus. Annoyingly, this mount swap was a Canon-only service, which did limit the versatility of the camera. Luckily, this is something Canon fixed with the C500 Mark II, which featured a user-swappable mount system. So why did the C700 not do quite as well as it could have? Well, I think it's a mix of a few things. First off, the camera's design, I think, could have put a few people off, just because of the size of the thing. Canon doesn't have a large name in the cinema market compared to the photography and video market. And this means that demand for the camera would be low versus its competition. And this in hand would have scared rental houses from investing into them. The image quality was also considered to be subpar compared to its competition for the asking price. But for the current price, I think it can look very good. We've spoken a lot about the negatives with this camera. But I think Canon did do a lot right. And I really want to see this camera series live on. The C300 has been one of the most popular cameras in the video and documentary market for years. However, there are loads of people who want an F55 replacement, and I think an updated C700 could fill this gap in the market. Imagine this form factor slightly reduced in size, but still decently light, a good, reasonably priced viewfinder, Canon's newest autofocus system, RF mount with Canon-made solid adapters for PL, EF, and B4, a slightly more granular 10-stop ND, and then a full frame DGO sensor with C300 Mark III level image quality and all the other modern bells and whistles in Canon's latest cinema cameras all combined. All of this mixed together at the 15 to 20,000 pound price point, I honestly think that they would sell a good few of them as it would be going into an area of the market that is currently lacking competition and options. So at 6,000 pounds, the C700 full frame is insanely cheap for what it is, but you'll need to spend some money on accessories around it to really get it to a good place for shooting and really, it's designed for multiple people to operate it, not solo operators. Though it can be done. The C400 Mark II has actually just had a price drop from Canon, so that may make more sense to a lot of people to grab than this. Anyway, let us know what you would love to see in an updated C700 down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like, and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.